What's going on everyone? In this video today, I'm gonna to do a review of a lifter that I handled this past weekend and go over some tips and tricks that you could take away for your meets. So as always, let's get right into the video. Alrighty, what's going on my Palpton people? I am back from another meet. So of course I am pooped, a little bit tired, but I am getting better each day as I'm getting some rest in. So this past weekend, we had our USA Powerlifting Florida State Championships. And so I went up there to West Palm Beach and I did some uh, helping with setting up, did some announcing. I handled one lifter who was not one of my lifters as I was handling at the meet. He's coached by uh, RTS, Mark Robb. And then I helped with again, announcing and breaking down the meet. So in this video today, I just want to do a review of how the lifter did. His name is John Laflamme. He's a lifter here in Florida. He's a referee and he also does our records here in Florida. So he asked me to handle them. So I figured I'd show you guys what lifts he did since he's a really strong masters lifter in addition go over some tips and tricks that you may be able to take away based on things we did at the competition and if you're new here to this channel and you don't know who i am my name is aaron Comessi. i'm a powerful coach athlete referee and meet director so i make videos here on this channel to help out those groups of people so if any of those topics interest you be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos just like this so of course we're going to get started with the squat and john opened up with 177.5 kilograms for his first attempt we jumped up to 187.5 kilograms for a second attempt and then we finished off with 92.5 kilograms for his third attempt and you can see the videos from each attempt as i put them up and for the 192.5 kilograms it was actually two and a half kilos over the world record so if this was an international competition with those international referees it would have been a world record attempt and it would have been a new world record but since it was just a local competition you have all the u.s referees then you can't break ipf world records at a local competition so it just was not a world record and just as an interesting note the american record is actually higher than the world record so the american record is at 195 whereas the world record is at 190 because of situations like this where lifters may come to local meets and they may put up bigger numbers but they haven't gone to an international competition yet to set those world records and of course last year we did not have any of the world championships but the plan is that this year John is going to try and go to international competition whether it's world or the North Americans in order to break that world record I don't have any specific tricks or tips when it comes to the squat and what happened with John on that day everything went pretty smooth but what I wanted to go over is some questions that people have when it comes to you know at the actual meet or even asking online before they go to the meet is knowing how to time their warm-ups i do have videos on this channel where i go more in depth into it but one thing just for you as like a general idea is first you have to see which group you're in or flight and then how many groups there are in total so are you in the first one out of two are you in the second one out of two or are you in the second one out of three and so based on which group you're in and how many groups there are then you have to time your warm-ups based on when you're going to be going out so for example if you are in the first group and lifting starts at 9 a.m then you should be basing your squat warm-ups based on you're going to be lifting at about 9 a.m maybe 905 or 910 depending where you are in the order but around 9 a.m you are starting so time and warm-ups based off of that if it takes you 30 minutes start at 8 30 so we started about you know a little before that 8 25 and john got up and started moving around and warming up before he got underneath the bar and then we did all the attempts based on you know, he's in the first flight and we're starting at 9 a.m if you are in the second flight you can't based off an exact start time as far as like you know 9 a.m or 9 30 9 45 because you don't know how fast the previous flight is going to go you can assume that it's going to be about one minute per attempt that's a good guideline but sometimes people go faster sometimes people go slower sometimes people don't put their second or third attempt in they'll scratch and so then the time goes down so what you need to be basing off instead is basing off the speed of the previous flight so when the first flight is done warming up and at 9 a.m they're going and doing their attempts on the main platform then the warm room is open for you to start warming up so then you do your warm-ups based on how fast they're going and what attempt they're in so as an example if you have five squat warms you can do two of the warms during the first attempts two of the warms during the second attempts and then your final warm up during the third attempts and then you are ready to go when your flight comes up and then just another important thing to note when it goes into bench press and delicate warm-ups is that in the usapl and in the ipf if there's only one group then there's a 20 minute break between squat and bench press and a 20 minute break between bench press and delicate if there are two or more groups then there's a 10 minute break between squat and bench press and a 10 minute break between bench press and delicate just so they have time to switch out all the equipment give the volunteers some break and how the lifters have time to warm up so that is a standard rule in usapl and ipf so you all should know that in case you go to those competitions you don't have to ask or wait for them to announce it that is the rule moving on to the bench press john originally had the plan to be 100 kilos for the first 105 for the second and 107.5 for the third but you can see from the videos that i put up that it's actually 97.5 for the first 
and then 102.5 for the second and then 107.5 for the third and that's an adjustment that we made the day of just to get a bigger jump between the attempts and not gas them out too much before the third attempt so you can kind of think of it one of two ways you can base your second attempt on oh if i miss my third i want to have a high second or you can think of i'm gonna make my third so let me have the second be the right jump where i'm not gassing myself out for that third personally i like to do it the second way because i like to build a game plan on making attempts so i'm gonna make that third attempt so i want to base everything off of making that third attempt i don't want to pick attempts based on oh i'm gonna miss my third so i'm gonna pick my second to be high enough because i'm gonna miss my third well in that case you shouldn't be taking that third anyways so originally john has attempts to be 100 105 107.5 because he was worried about missing that 107.5 and he wanted to have that 105 guaranteed as a high second attempt as a high safety net but i told him what i think i said the standard based on like percentages would be to do your you know the 97.5 102.5 and 107.5 and also it's going to give him a good enough jump that you know if the 102.5 goes well and is moving well and everything feels good then you didn't gas yourself out you can go to the 107.5 execute it and get that lift but if the 102.5 doesn't go well then you can just take the 105 and you know end up at the same point but you make three attempts instead of making two attempts which also helps you mentally that you know you made three for three rather than going two for three and missing again like you maybe have done in previous meets and then could be like you know sent yourself up for deadlifts where then you start missing devil attempts too because you're annoyed that you missed the bench press attempt so set yourself up on i'm going to make this third attempt so i'm going to pick my second attempt based on that i'm going to make that third attempt and then i'm going to set myself for success to make all my attempts and have the momentum going in the right direction the other thing you'll notice with john is he has a very 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 narrow grip so he doesn't use that max grip that a lot of people do he said that in the past he has used wider grips before but he has arthritis in the shoulder and he has like the bone on bone grip grinding with the wider grip so he had tested out doing narrower and narrower grips and he found out that this very narrow grip where basically his hand is on where the sharp part turns into the smooth portion of the bar as his grip now where he's not going to get that grinding and he's just built up that strength now to where he can do the similar numbers that what he was doing with the wider grip so you can see it comes off the chest well and just slows up into lockout because he has to just work on continuously building those triceps because he has such a long range of motion and such a narrow grip that's really working that tricep for that lockout all right and then for the deadlift john's original plan was to do 217.5 kilograms for the first either 232.5 or 230 for the second and then either 242.5 or 240 for the third and the plan was that based on how he did on the squat and bench press and what numbers he had going into that point on the subtotal is what he would need to break the american record total because the american record total was 530 kilograms so he wanted to break that so we figured out that doing 232.5 on the second attempt would give him a 532.5 kilogram total which would break that american record total so as you can see in the video the first attempt was fine and then we took that 232.5 on the second attempt to break that american record total and it moved well so we were deciding between 240 and 242.5 that was the original plan i was thinking 240 and then john thought let's just go 237.5 maybe he was feeling a little bit tired and just you know bump up the american total a little bit further before he goes into nationals where you know he's actually gonna try and make the team and go to worlds so then you can see on the 237.5 he got it off the ground got it right out to where the knees were and then just ran out energy and couldn't finish it so a little bit unusual based on a second attempt that you know five more kilos wasn't there but it could just be you know pushing yourself on the squat it being somewhat of a fast day and then taking a little bit of energy out on that second delve that the third attempt just wasn't there that day now an important thing to know when discussing this american record total that a lot of lifters and some referees have problems with that they were confused about and they actually updated the rule book and clarified this is that there is a difference between setting an american record in single lift and setting an american record in the total but not in any of the individual lifts. So if you're gonna go set an American record, let's say on the third attempt squat, then you just have to make sure you have those national or international referees in the chair for that third attempt squat. So you have those higher level referees judging that specific lift. And if they say it's a good lift, and then you break the American record totally, you fill out the paperwork, you get drug tests if you need to, and you get it. So that's the same thing if it's, you know, a third attempt bench or third attempt deadlift, first attempt deadlift, any single lift. But if you're going for the American record total and you don't have the referees in the chair for those lifts that make the total, then you don't meet the requirements of having a national or international referees in the chair for those attempts that make the total. So you have to make sure you have the referees in the chair for those lifts. So you can make sure they have them in for the third attempts if you're going to be sure you're going to make all your third attempts. But what if you miss your one of your thirds and you have to take your second attempt as your successful, let's say, squat? Well, you have to make sure that they're there too. So what we did is we had the referees come in for all three squats and all three benches to make sure we had the national referees in the chair for all those squats and benches in case whatever one ends up being the one that makes out the total. And then for the deadlift, the first attempt wasn't going to make up the total anyway. So if he had only made the first and missed the second and third, he would have never got 
the total. So we didn't need to switch out the referees for the first attempt on Delop, but we did again switch out the referees for the second attempt for Delop and the third attempt for Delop, so that for all those lifts that he made and makes up the total for the American record, they had the national and international referees in the chair so that we meet the standards. And then again, just sit submitting the paperwork and everything like that, then you get the American record. So this is an issue that almost happened in a previous session at the same meet where a lifter was going for a team three American record in the total, and he thought the referees were in the chair and we didn't know, we didn't have the referees in the chair and it was coming down to his final deadlift. When we found out about the situation, it ended up not making his final deadlift. So it became, you know, a moot point. But if he had made that, then you would have to go back to him and say, hey, you didn't tell us we didn't have the referees in the chair. And so you only had state referees um, refereeing your lifts that major American record total, and that would have been an issue. And this happens at some other meets as well. So if you are someone who's going for an American record for individual lift or for the total, is always make sure that they have the referees at the meet, make sure they have the referees in the chair for that single lift you're going for the record for. And if you're going just for the total and not for any individual lifts, make sure they're there for every single attempt. So whichever ones you make that make up that American record total you have the right referees in there then be sure you stick around so that if you get selected for drug testing you are there for drug testing and then be sure you have your id on you or a copy of your id or birth certificate whatever you need in order to show proof of your age if you're going for the age division record or you know proof of you being a collegiate lifter if you're going for a collegiate record those kind of things that way you have everything correct and you don't lose that record because in the end the rule book says it is on the lifter to make sure the american record packet on all the requirements are met for them to get that american record all right so hopefully you like my recap for John Laflamme at the 2021 USA PL Florida State Championship. Hopefully there's some tips and tricks that you took away either as a lifter or a coach or maybe as a referee. Maybe you didn't know the situation with the American record total. And so hopefully this video helped you out. I got another meet I got to go to this weekend and a USA PL athlete camp after that. So it's going to be a little bit hectic, but I'm going to still try and put out these videos for you all. So be sure to give it a like if you liked it. And then you can check out my latest video here if you missed out on it. And you can check out all kinds of powerful tips and tricks in this playlist right here. Other than that, I'll see you guys in that next video.